welcome. Welcome everyone. Uh, lovely to see um, this, uh, this new uh, theatre nice and busy. Um, and welcome to Oakton John University for those of you who don't work here or haven't been here before. Uh, my name is Rob Hickey, I'm the Chief Operating Officer here at the University. Before we get to the main event, I've got a little bit of housekeeping to do. So, um, uh, before we start the lecture, could you please take a moment to familiarise yourself with the fire exits? I think they are, uh, they are uh, marked um, quite clearly. Um, if the fire alarm sounds uh, tonight, it is not uh, a drill. We're not expecting any, any fire alarm drills. Um, so please evacuate the building immediately to, uh, through, through the exits and members of my team will, will show you out of the building. Uh, escape routes are uh, clearly marked with the, with the green sign. Uh, if I could politely ask you to turn off your mobile phone or put on the silence uh, before we start, that would be greatly appreciated. So, um, it's my great pleasure uh, to welcome you all to the inaugural lecture uh, of Dr. Nick Rowe, um, Professor in Arts and Mental Health and Director of Converge. <laughs> Therapy uh, and luckily in the School of the Arts. Uh, he has a particular interest in theatre and mental health uh, and is a performer, uh, a performing member uh, of the Playback Theatre in York. Um, this has involved working with a range of theatres all over the country and uh, had other partners um, within the sector and, uh, and outside. In 2008, uh, Nick founded Converge, uh, a unique partnership between the University and the NHS and regional mental health service providers that offers a range of high quality educational opportunities free to public access to, to adults who use mental health services uh, in the region. Uh, the award winning Converge project has become incredibly important to the university um, and our community. Uh, so far over 1,000 people uh, have been supported and in many cases have been able to reduce their dependence on local mental health services, so quite, quite an achievement. Um, one of the most innovative things about Converge is that it brings our staff, our students and people with personal experiences of mental health challenges uh, together to learn and work and collaborate um, using education for recovery. Um, the, the success of Converge in York um, has led to it being developed and rolled out, and rolled out elsewhere. Close to home at North Dunbury University up in Newcastle, um, but also, oh, a cheer for Newcastle, never, <laughs> never a bad thing, never a bad thing. Uh, and further afield at Pacific University in Oregon in the United States. In fact, uh, the Converge Education, sorry, the Converge Evaluation and Research Team here now offer a bespoke evaluation service um, supporting mental health services and community projects as well. Um, everyone at the Oxford John. Uh, was delighted when Nick was awarded an MBE in 2018. <laughs> for, his, for his amazing service to uh, mental health service users and his tireless work uh, in establishing the pioneering Converge project. So, without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Nick for what I know will be a fascinating talk. <laughs> Thank you, thank you Rob so much for those, those kind words and thank you too for the choir. Um, can we give them a round of applause? <laughs> I've been a proud member of the choir since I think since it began and it's been a really important part of Converge. Um, one of the ways in which we sh show what Converge means so I'm really grateful for them for singing to us tonight. So looking around the audience and, and uh, meeting some of you in, in, the, in the atrium, I'm just struck by how grateful I am to so many people here. 
because conversion would not have happened without many of the people in this room. I would have said most of the people in this room have contributed to the project in very big ways and small ways too to make this project work. It is a convergence, it is a converge of many people to coming together to make it happen. And you know who you are, and everybody here, um, there are many people who uh, I should mention tonight, and I'll not be able to mention all the names. But I want to just mention in, in the beginning uh, and say a particular thank you to some people and some organizations around which Converge um, has totally depended. Um, I'm going to begin with Emma McKenzie. Where are you, Emma? <laughs> <laughs> Emma and I sat in uh, what we used to call the crush bar, sat in the crush bar and planned what became from the mm -hmm. in those early days. Uh, uh, Emma was an occupational therapist at the time. And um, I pitched it to the students, and one particular person who's here tonight, I'm delighted that she's here tonight, is Gemma. And in many ways, Gemma was absolutely crucial to the establishment and development of Converge as a student, and then afterwards she did it for free for a long time before we could get some money. So um, I think it's very important to mention that uh, Jenna would not have happened without it. So, uh, um, <laughs> um, there are a few other people that I know there's so many to mention, but there's Hilary Bailey who. who <laughs> I don't do many more things anymore. 
I forgot to move my slide. <laughs> so, anyway, thank you, Mark. And it doesn't even work. How about that? Shall we do the last one? 
<laughs> Why does that not work? Okay. There we are. No, that doesn't work either. There. 1982. I'm not going to tell that story again, but that happened in 1982. <laughs> and that is 1982, for those of you who remember it. Okay. Oh, well, I knew these things would go wrong. So, um, so, I don't know about you, but over, over the years, ideas have begun to climb. They've stuck to me. Certain ideas, certain experiences, don't just be filled with one of them, but other experiences have really stuck. And I wanted to share some of those with you tonight on how they've grown and converged uh, uh, and uh, been very influential in how convergence developed. I want to share three key tests against which we should measure converge. Kind of a measuring stick, if you like, against which we should measure converge. But now and in the future, because converge has most definitely a significant future, and um, it's these tests I'm suggesting to you, these key and important principles of converge. I want to share with you tonight, and I think they have implications well beyond um, the uh, well beyond convergence. <coughs> All of that's going to be underpinned for me, it's underpinned for me by the idea of social value, and I'll talk to you a bit about that later on. But briefly, Wolf Wolf Wolfensberger in the 1990s and 1980s wrote about. Um, social value. And he noticed that people who are marginalised in society often do things which are not valued by society, they have roles that are not valued by society, and they go to places that are not valued by society. And he said the best way to control prejudice and marginalisation and discrimination is to bring people into places that society values and do things that society values. And that's a key test for conversion, and the things in the way I think that we do, I think. For a start in those, um, I, I, as, as you can imagine, thinking about this lecture, I've uh, for quite a long time, I've become aware I'm very much a pragmatist in the sense I'm interested in theory, that uh, when theory makes things happen, or when it informs action, I'm much more interested in that perhaps than pure theory. I'm not going to speak tonight specifically about art, although art plays a huge role in Converge. Partly because I don't want Converge identified as an arts and culture project. It's broader than that education project, I can't say more. Okay, as you can imagine, I've spent a lot of my life talking about Converge, or the last 14 years, I know it seems like a lifetime, of talking about Converge. And I, I realised when I was um, preparing for this that I had two gestures with the arms. And gesture one is opening the university to people who use mental health services. That's a, that's a gesture I've used so many times in talks. And the second gesture is a convergence of interests. A convergence of interests of the university and its students and staff and of people who use mental health services and providers in the city. And it's that convergence of interest which has allowed converge to really develop in its language. So it's about opening the university up and recognizing a convergence of interest. And I'll talk more about that in a bit. But before um, I'm going to have to get some water. My mouth is dry. Before I go on any further, um, I want to tell you where we are now because so you get a sense of what's happening in Converge. Now, and I'd like you to imagine it, if you, if you can, to imagine York St. John, imagine Clarence Street, um, and then you go up Axley Road, for those of you in North and Orlando, until we get to Post Hospital. So I'd like you to imagine that, you know, it's a Northern Quarter, it's a phrase that we were, we've been using quite regularly, that quarter. So um, I want to speak about converging that way as a journey, uh, an encouraging group to make a journey. So let's begin here. What's happening here? 
Well, of course, we run, and this, this spring we've run 31 courses um, on campus for adults who use mental health services and for university students. Um, where 165 people applied for those, 55 of whom were new for the project. We've done courses from filmmaking to computer programming, archaeology to songwriting, from creative writing to research methods. Through the years of Converge, over 20 people have come into Converge and then uh, uh, signed up on our undergraduate or postgraduate programs in the university through a sense progression. Currently, we're employing 14 university graduates, 12 people who have entered Converge uh, themselves and now we're able to employ them in different roles within the organization. We have a, a fabulous team of student support that we call the Discovery Hub, funded by the NHS and the Life of Vienna. Um, people perform, publish, and evaluate, and research. We have uh, an evaluation and research team called CERT, uh, as I mentioned earlier, by, by Ruth. Um, by Ruth. Um, they're doing external evaluations, currently a very big evaluation in Manchester, um, one uh, in London in the, in the autumn, and a number of local ones too. We have a very strong admin team, crucial to the whole delivery of, of, of Converge. So we're still on campus here, aren't we? Um, where we've got funding to do a large external evaluation which is coming to its close. And I'm not going to refer directly to that today because it's an independent evaluation and they should be managing the way the news comes out about it rather than me. Okay, but, and we also, we also uh, work online now in Converge Connected, offering courses online. So we're now leaving campus and we're going up Clarence Street. We're beginning to offer some courses in, in Clarence Street, which is a mental health centre there, and at the Haven, which is a mental health crisis centre, we're offering courses there too. So now I'm going up Hexley Road, and the university is extending to the hospital. And that's really important. It's a really important thing, very much supported by uh, Liz and Hugh in doing this, um, extending the work right up to the hospital. So um, we're offering courses there of various sorts, and we're running exhibitions uh, in the hospital. So we, we have uh, we've just finished our third exhibition, which is now available in the hospital to see. Um, we, uh, we, we Northumbria University, Toby's here from Northumbria. Northumbria University have adopted Converge, they've made it their own, in their own way, they've adopted it. Um, um, Pacific University, students from Pacific University are, are come each year to work with, with us over the, over the period of June. So a lot is happening, a lot is going on in Converge, which I'm delighted about. And it's all sprung from the simple idea of opening up the campus and a convergence of interests of a university and mental health service provider. Okay, let me um, find a little doozy. Oh, because it doesn't work, does it? So, I've only been lecturing for 30 years. <laughs> Not Come on, you've got to cut me some slack. <laughs> okay, um, I'll, I'll just bring this and do that. So, the first of these tests is uh, I'm calling orientation. And orientation is about how we are with others, uh, how we know how to be with others, how, how are we with others, and um, how we understand what we're doing with others. And this is a crucial thing in Converge. This, in a way, is a certain type of orientation, isn't it? It's a light of listening to me. It's a, it's a way we've orientated ourselves. Uh, there are certain, certain social rules here today, and we understand that. There are certain social rules in hospitals. We know how to behave in a hospital towards the staff and staff behave in certain ways towards that, with certain language, certain ways of um, limiting the amount of personal disclosure and so on that, um, that is appropriate in healthcare settings. 
And that's the same in mental health care settings, except there's a problem. That people who have longer periods of mental ill health begin to be often trapped by the system, trapped by the identity of, of being a mental health service user, trapped by the diagnosis, a diagnosis which ends up overarching their own experience. So orientation and how we orientate ourselves in the mental health setting, in the traditional mental health setting, is problematic. And we know that, and I don't think there's a huge deal, deal of uh, debate around that fact. So how we orientate ourselves in Converge, then, is crucial. In fact, if you leave after this slide, then um, we, uh, we have done our job. Because this has been the orientation of Converge. I think from when, you know, when Gemma was here, right at the beginning, when Anna was here. And they're very simple. This, this, these, these phrases actually came from a Converge tune. Students, not patients. That's the first orientation. So to regard people as students, not as patients or people with or service users, but the orientation is people who come into the campus come in as students. Education, not therapy. That's crucial for us. So what we're talking about is education of all sorts, not not a therapy. And that's been one of the misunderstandings currently commonly in Converge as people uh, misunderstood it as a form of therapy, drama therapy, music therapy, but no, it's about education. And why is it that if you have a mental health problem and you have to do, you do courses called drama and well-being, or drama therapy, or drama therapy is a particular role, I'm not saying it wasn't, but, uh, or using the word like on prescription, why can we not just do drama? or music or creative writing. Why are we adding these things just because people have um, certain, uh, certain uh, in, in a certain position in their lives? And the third is, and I quite like this one, it feels a bit different, is discovering what recovery. So the focus is on discovering new things, not recovery, going back to the way things were. But, so it's an interesting and sort of provocative kind of Recovery, not recovery, but we should we should get rid of the knots, and uh, this is what we end up with: students, education, and discovery. And those are the words that that's the orientation of converge. It's an educational project that took place in the university. I often say it's not a mental health project; it's an education project that takes place in the university. That has been crucial for all sorts of reasons. Um, and it's, it's, it's probably more than anything held, uh, held us in a particular orientation towards people. So that's the first test in a way. Are we, for me, that is the test. Are we doing this? Where we're not doing this, we can be criticised. We can be challenged. We're not, as far as we can, regarding people as students and engaging people in education and discovery, then we are beginning to change the focus of the project. There's something as well about the integrity of, of art, the integrity of a subject um, that I'm really interested in. We preserve the integrity of, these, of, of, of learning and not uh, attribute to it the word health or the word well-being or the word or whatever words get attributed. Quite simply, it's an educational project. Okay, so test number one is the orientation. Test, if you like, if test is the right word, I'm not sure it is, but um, it's a, a, a yardstick, I suppose. And it's around the power of place, and it's not surprising, is it, that... Um, that this comes from the orientation. So the converge happens in a university. And when it happens in the hospital, what it means is that the university has extended itself to the hospital. So um, people can come on campus, but the university 
Do things that society values, that are valued by society. And this university has a long tradition of this. From the drama therapy summer schools um, in the 1970s, and, and uh, David Wallace, <coughs> who led those many years ago, and have had great influence on many of us. The universities have a long history, actually, of working and inviting people onto campus. And it still is. I think they're quite an extraordinary place, and they're doing quite remarkable things in many ways. And I just want to spend a moment or two just noting what else is happening here in this way of inviting people into the university. I think it's just for, um, the extension of um, the university to women's prison, the prison partnership project, and by Rachel, like um, NSPCC work that um, Bill's are, are doing for the Moving Minds project in which people with um, dementia are invited onto campus to dance with Elaine, or the community centre indeed that uh, Lynn has, has developed. Tracy's, Tracy Willett's uh, remarkable film about um, people uh, experiencing mental health problems in Newcastle, and of course the Institute for Social Justice, which is really important in developing part of the work here at Worksite John. But is this a role for a university to be doing this? Who are the universities that are teaching students? I mean, they pay the money, I'm sure. Um, they, uh, they pay for, for this. So it's a question, isn't it? And it's, it's a question that's perhaps bringing universities into crisis in the future. Nevertheless, there has been, and I wonder if you're familiar with this, there has been a suggestion that there are three main roles of a university. The first one is teaching, of course. And of course, in Converge, we engage university students in the, in the delivery of courses, in singing in the choir, leading the choir, and being part of a character theatre company, uh, and in the moment, and so on. Um, secondly, uh, we involve people, uh, sorry. Secondly, the second role of a university is research. And the third is, it's got different names, which is interesting, and that's because it hasn't settled down yet, I guess, but it's got certain names, social engagement, a porous university. Um, the third mission, which I only recently heard about, is, is a, a phrase used in uh, Europe particularly, but this third role of a university. Now, when these three things work together, they produce extraordinary education. Okay. When they're working together, and Converge is one way, and so are the other projects I've mentioned to you. When these things are working together, like a three-legged stool that is balanced together, this is really effective learning for people. So they're learning through import, 
they're learning through research and they're learning through engagement in the community. Those three things are um, crucial. So a test for converges, are we doing these three things? Because our risk is that we turn all our focus to adults with mental health problems in the community and so on, which is absolutely right, but we never forget that we have those. We, we need to be um, balancing these three parts of the of, of, uh, the, um, of, of the university's mission, if you like. Okay, this comes to the technical bit. This is very technical and it's still about it. So, um, <laughs> Mark will know what I mean, won't you, Mark? <laughs> right, okay. So Mark did this for me, this remarkable slide. I said to him, I said to him, um, I've got this phrase, which is turning the ins university inside out. And that's um, an image of how I conceive conversion into other projects we've been. Turning the university inside out. So the one I've always had, you know, is the quad. Uh, if those of you know the quad, turning itself out to the community. Turning the university inside out. So I asked Mark to do some work on this. Um, and uh, I'm going to play it to you. And I might just pause it because it's very beautiful. So there we are. There's, this is, you can see, can't you, all those buildings. For those of us who come here, are very familiar. And, um, and then I'm going to play it. Whoa. <laughs> yes. Um, so uh, you've got, um, well, you, you recognize quite a few of these things. So that lovely idea, you know, of the university turning itself out to the community is, is what we actually at York Centre are really good at. We may not be good at some things, but we're very, very good at this. Um, and uh, um, I think that's very valuable. So this is the technical bit. No, it's not. No, the technical bit isn't quite yet. The technical bit is me getting back to the slides. So I'm going to try. Oh, there we are. A university turned inside out. But inwards too. So if we were just turned outwards to the community, I don't think we'd be anywhere near as effective. There is a proper moment for a university to turn inwards, to reflect and think and read and study and um, and that needs to be there too for research and so on. So this idea, you know, of the university turning itself in and out is, I suppose, something that um, I want to suggest to you is, is something that we're very good at and what converge in many ways and some of these other projects to embody. And the third test, um, yeah, it's time to sit down again. It's time to sit down again. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what I used to do. But thinking about my uni uh, universities inside out, um, I want to mention connecting our city, and I know Joe is here, and Chris is here, and I know Kate couldn't come. But there's a really interesting initiative in the city, which is around connecting the city. And if we were to summarise it is, it is to say that it's making the whole city responsible for the mental health of the citizens and not just mental health services. So it's, as it were, um, harnessing the whole of your community for the benefit of people who use mental health services. So the university, I think, are playing their part. Okay. The third thing that I want to talk about is both learning, researching and making things together. Because at the heart of it, that's what we do. We learn together, make things together, theatre, songs, music, choirs and so on, and research. Um, when, uh, before I came here, I used to work for, well I was a project leader of you know, a project called Skills for People in Newcastle. Um, and the project was, um, the basic idea was to work with people who learn <coughs> to train them to 
present courses to other people with learning disabilities and people who and, and professionals in the area. So it was a slow work, as you can imagine, lots of train people and support people to be teachers, people with learning disabilities to be teachers of other people with learning disabilities and professionals. And we did courses like being your own boss and um, learning to live in the community because people were just coming out of the community then. But the striking thing was, of course, people were, um, people were doing things together. It's working together to make something happen, to make a cause happen. So it had a profound effect on me, actually, working in that way for four years. Not only um, the challenges that I presented, but I also had to raise the money for the project. So I learned a lot through that, and a lot of the work that uh, 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 went into developing Converge comes out of that. OK, so central to Converge is, I'm going to stand up again now. <laughs> central to Converge. <laughs> Have you noticed the something? The walk is a bit if you want to borrow it. What's that? The walk is All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave that by the end. Yeah. Um, so learning, researching, and making things together, yeah. So that's what happens here, isn't it? You know, we make theatre dance, sing, research, and by the way, write, make films, make artwork. Um, there's a shared passion here for the arts, we research together and so on. Now about the to doing thing, doing <coughs> things together, it does strike me, and it struck me many times, and uh, I've said this to Davis and from the theatre department here and uh, Jules, is that um, uh, Converge developed while I was lecturing in the theatre department, developed in theatre. Um, which in itself I think is really intriguing. Why it developed in theatre when it hadn't developed when I was teaching in life. I think this is something to do with risk. Because um, theatre people and arts people generally are not afraid of risk. In fact, they're welcome from making a mistake. Because they're making a mistake. Teachers do something and you learn something from it. But for very obvious reasons and very justifiable reasons in health. You know, we are worried about risk and, um, uh, and it, it does inhibit. So Converge came out of a theatre department, which is in itself a really interesting observation, I think. Okay. Um, and something about it just being theatre, and I talked to you about the integrity of the arts before. And I want to just... Um, invite you to consider this. There's a few versions of this quote. But I like it. Um, and you might very much agree with this. Those only are happy who have their minds fixed on some object other than their own happiness. On the happiness of others, on the improvement of mankind, even on some art or pursuit, followed not as a means, but as itself an ideal end. Put it another way, if we, if we pursue happiness for another, I'm likely to find it. We find happiness by doing other things. And so, um, comes to the moment when uh, I want to introduce to you this idea that's been, it, it wasn't, I didn't, I wasn't aware of it when we both started, but it kind of explains things for me. And it's called obliquity. Um, in other words, obliqueness, approaching things at an angle. And um, this is the moment when um, <laughs> today taught me how to do the uh, <coughs> sign for this. So um, this is direct, is that right? Yes. Yeah. So if you would do that, so um, I'm going to invite you all to do that, just as a variation. So one finger up there, so and you can see you're looking through a sit through sense. There's a direct aim on something, or directing aim, and, and obliquity, or indirectness, is when you move over to the side, exactly, so direct, obliquity, moving over to the side, not approaching things directly. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> Okay, so um, 
it's a, it's a, I think, a really <laughs> interesting idea that sometimes um, developed by somebody uh, called uh, John Kay, the basic idea that we need to approach things as a start, not directly. So um, it seems to me a really valuable justification for staying with education, staying with the integrity of the arts and so on, because they approach things often indirectly and not directly. So it's not like we don't we don't we don't be talking about mental health problems in in government. We just don't particularly involve it because the most important thing is for people to engage in a learning in the art, whatever it is. So that that's the that's the key key focus for us. Emily Dickinson said that the, the poet uh, tell all the truth but tell it slant. Success in circuit lines. Okay, I'm just aware of time, and um, I'm going to just move on to that second bit, but relatively quickly. It's about it's about uh, togetherness. It's about doing things together, which is a key test. Doing things together and converge. Um, there's some lovely phrases have been used, you know, we, we developed the phrase community of learners and we have, I don't think it's here tonight, it may be somewhere, but he, he talked about uh, Converge being a friendly society, which is a really nice way of putting it, you know. Um, so certainly doing things together seems to be crucial and I was very struck by uh, this, this, this um, quote from Gordon Allport and all the work that comes from it, this idea of a contact hypothesis. Um, and uh, I think it's a really interesting idea, um, published in the year of my birth. Um, prejudice may be reduced by equal status contact between majority and minority groups in the pursuit of common goals, making theatre together, writing together, singing together, and so on. The effect is greatly enhanced if this contact is sanctioned by institutional supports. Thank you, York St. John, for doing that. By law, custom, blood clubs. And provided it is of a sort that leads to perception of common interests and common humanity. So, the contact hypothesis, this idea that one of the best ways to address prejudice is to bring people together around a shared task whatever that is, a learning task, a making art task, a researching together task. I think it's a, a fascinating idea. I've lost my notes, which are over here. I did used to do this in short. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, okay. So, I'm going to... I don't know, I want to just say... No, no. <laughs> okay. I'm going to jump and I'm going to talk about very, again, to bring you back to social value. So social value is, is crucial and it's a key test of converge. Uh, are, are, are we engaging people in things that are, are valued by society? And whatever that might mean, are we doing that? If so, we're likely to make a difference and make real change. So I've summarised to you those three tests. One is orientation an orientation towards education and people and students. Um, the second is about the place and the power of the place. University is to make them. And the third is about learning together um, and making things together, underpinned by social value. So as I bring this lecture to a close, I want to just share with you um, some of the one of the things that we've learned when we've been uh, doing this project for 14 years, um, there are many other things, and probably a people here can tell me additional things, and quickly they'll do that in questioning. One thing is, I've learned is you've got to have a really clear brand. You've got to have a really clear vision. You have a really clear idea what it is. For us, looking at the university and the idea of conversion. Secondly, the central importance of administration. You know, charities often criticise for spending money on administration, but actually, it is crucial. 
This is the main way, way that we care for people. One of the main ways we care for people is through good administration. And, and so, you know, I, I fight for it and converse because it makes a difference. <coughs> the third, third is that initiatives like this need air to breathe and freedom to develop and experiment. And in order for that to happen, <coughs> we need managers who will allow that to happen within limits, of course, and that's why I thank Rob at the back there for that excellent management that, that I've experienced. Um, it is interesting, isn't it? And I don't mean any rudeness to very senior managers, but projects like this don't come from top level management. They come from the bottom of organisations. Um, and that's an important thing to remember often. Managers' job you know, is often to, to hold it and to encourage it, to water it, to protect it, and so on. <coughs> um, so what are the challenges being, I'm only going to, sh I, when I'm thinking about this, there are obvious challenges, you know, raising the money, all that kind of thing. The, the biggest challenge has always been to uh, uh, people misunderstanding converge, putting it into an existing category. Oh, it's, it's, it's arts and health, isn't it? Or, I think there's so many times, you were were you doing this to benefit the mental health of the university students. Um, or it's a mental health project. No, it's an education project taking place in the university. So it's been, um, in that sense, I would, uh, I would suggest that it is a disruptive technology in the sense that it's unsettling uh, usual ideas about mental health and so on. Okay, so to conclude, it would have seemed inconceivable in 1982 um, that uh, people would be invited in, into a university to take place, to take part in all the, the work that happens here as researchers and, and uh, um, art makers of all sorts and to, to, to come in and be part of this community it would have seemed inconceivable. <coughs> and it's strange how it's a simple idea has opened up so many possibilities. Just one course, Gemma will remember that first course, then a few more, then I expect that things happen. Journalism, Jonathan said tonight, computer programming, individual music lessons, the use of the library, exhibitions at the hospital, research group, choir, students' union, archaeology, filmmaking. All of that happened from a very simple idea to open up the university. And that requires a certain culture of openness, generosity, and kindness. And the current culture that actually, I think, flourishes at this place, at this university. So, I don't know what happened to the man who played chess, um, because I was taken off the ward. But I hope that he continued to play. Um, but I, sadly, I lost touch with him after all. So thank you for being here. Thank you for listening to me over this period of time. I'm very grateful to you. I, I, as, as I got older, I've come to really appreciate the kindness of audiences. So, mm -hmm. from that. so thank you very much indeed. And I think now Rob will uh, invite you to ask some questions. Thank you. <laughs>
Can I just say it does work? <laughs> it's not my fault. <laughs> I thought it's my fault. <laughs> I was going to make it work. That's been a massively valuable. So that convergent moment 
is, is a key learning. And students have learned, <coughs> and this, this came out in the articles we wrote, about um, what to do when things go wrong, how to cope in the moment when things go wrong. Uh, and, and they find out some technology and things and that it just goes wrong. Um, so they uh, it's beginning to think in those kinds of things. I think it's Actually, we have a question down here. Is it, is it yourself? That is, yeah. Yes. Just wondering. Have you started training anybody up for your job yet? <laughs> <laughs> Are you interested? Well, you never know. <laughs> Have you noticed that you've noticed I'm getting tired? <laughs> 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 I was going to say, you know, that's it. <laughs> Why do people let me walk up there and just walk along? <laughs> well, no, not training, no. But of course, we've, you're right, we've got to think about that. The university has to think about that. I have to think about what what will happen and yeah, I mean, I don't want video, but you do a fantastic <laughs> job. It's still a lot. You are serious. The thing is, it's like it's going to, you've been doing it 14 years, and it's like it's going to take a hell of a long time to get somebody to your standard. Do you know what I mean? You've yeah. done a lot, and I really appreciate it, because you've saved my life. Do you know what I mean? I'm sure there's a lot of other people who've joined Converge that you've saved, that your idea has saved them. Do you know what I mean? So, Certainly, we're known in your now. Um, I think there's sometimes a misunderstanding, thinking that we're just a kind of mental health project. But um, that's, that's hard to turn that. But it's hard to change that. But yeah, rules slowly. Things, yeah. Thank you. Good question. Okay. I think I think we'll do it then. I think it's just, sorry, is there one more? It's not too mixed on it. I just want to say thank you for the downside. Yes. I will do that. So, yeah, it just uh, one last thing to say, really, and that is a massive thank you to Nick uh, from the university and from the, and I know from the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that you helped, supported, saved over over many, many years. So, massive, and I think we've got, I'm not going to give you, but we've got a, we've got a, a little, a little uh, bouquet of flowers. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.